Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will talk about metabolic syndrome and obesity in children. In the first part of the video we will talk about metabolic syndrome. In the second part about obesity in children. So first of all what is metabolic syndrome? It is a summary of conditions that are occurring concomitantly, which increase the risk of a person to suffer from heart diseases, diabetes type 2, and also to develop a stroke. These conditions are among others hypertension, so an abnormally high blood pressure, hyperglycemia, so high blood sugar, excess abdominal fat, and hyperlipidemia, as well as hypercholesterolemia, which are high cholesterol and triglyceride levels in the blood. Metabolic syndrome is also called syndrome X, insulin resistant syndrome, or Raven syndrome. The WHO has defined metabolic syndrome a little bit more detailed to put a few numbers on it and find a more clear demarcation. So according to the WHO, a patient must have elevated blood glucose levels at fasting state or an impaired glucose tolerance or diabetes mellitus together with two of the following criteria. First of all, a waist hip ratio over 0.85 for women or over 0.9 for men, and or a BMI over 30. The second point is triglycerides over 1.7 millimole per liter, and or HDL cholesterol over 0.9 for women, or over 1 millimole per liter for men. The third criteria is a blood pressure over 140 to 90 millimeter mercury. The fourth point is microalbuminuria over 20 microgram per minute or a albumin creatinine ratio of over 30 milligram per gram. Research also su suggests that if a child experiences childhood obesity, this is a very powerful predictor for the accumulation of several of the other risk factors for metabolic syndrome in the future as an adult. This topic becomes increasingly important as in the last 40 years the number of children suffering from childhood obesity increased 10 times. It is one of the most serious global health issues as with obesity starting in childhood many more adults will experience serious health conditions as I mentioned earlier, threat of diabetes type 2, stroke and heart diseases. In the next point, I would like to talk a little bit more about reasons for the development of childhood obesity. Studies have shown that there is a strong genetic correlation of the tendency to become obese. This study included siblings that have grown up in different environments and how likely they were to become obese. Other studies also have shown the importance of the role model of the parents in terms of healthy and balanced cooking, portion size and the establishment of healthy habits as finding a hobby requiring physical activity. These factors are called transgenetic factors and basically it means that many children learn to copy their parents' or family's behavior and food preferences even after not living with them anymore. Another study indicates that there might be a genetic influence and that contemporary epigenetic changes can influence gene methylation and so make the human genotype more prone to obesity. Besides genetics, there are many environmental factors for the development of childhood obesity. One of the points is the development of portion sizes over the years. 
On the poster you can see a standard fast food menu of the 1950s compared with the standard fast food menu of today. And as you can see, it is over four times as large. Another environmental factor is the traditional misconception that children first grow in width, then in height, and that children need to eat enough to grow healthily, even though this enough is, as studies show, often way too much, leading to children being overweight or even obese. Also, the technological development of the last decades increased the time spent at home with the usage of TV, video games and phones as free time investments instead of physical activity together with a shift of work environments to an overall more sedentary lifestyle. Studies also have shown that as much as 57% of advertisements that are targeted at children or are shown in commercial breaks in childhood programs contain information about fast food, sweets and sugary beverages promoting the interest of children in those kind of foods. Of course, there are also disease-related factors leading to obesity in children. These diseases include genetic diseases as the Prader-Willi syndrome, endocrine diseases as Cushing syndrome and hypothyroidism, but also diseases that require the intake of medications that can increase the weight of the pediatric patient. In the next point, I would like to take a closer look at the definition and diagnosis of childhood obesity. Obesity in children and adolescents is defined as a BMI over the 97th percentile in the age and gender specific chart. This chart can be found on, for example, the webpage of the WHO or the CDC. Overweight is classified as a BMI over the 90th percentile to the 97th percentile. Obesity is classified as the BMI over the 97th to the 99.5th percentile and extreme obesity is classified as being over the 99.5th percentile. A pediatrician usually measures the height, weight and determines the BMI of the child. Also the blood pressure and blood glucose should be checked. To eliminate diabetes mellitus, an oral glucose tolerance test can be done. In some cases, a counseling with an orthopedician or a psychiatrist can be helpful as skeletal and psychiatric problems can arise from early childhood obesity. The treatment of childhood obesity can be difficult as the child is in younger ages, ages usually not the primary decision maker of their dietary habits or their changes, as well as free time activities. So a close working together with the parents is usually necessary. For many patients, depending on the underlying cause of the obesity, a combination of dietary counseling, activity therapy and behavioral therapy are used. A operative therapy in children and adolescents is usually only used in extreme cases and after thorough and careful evaluation. It is generally a last resort option. It is also important to keep in mind that studies as the 2017 report in the New England Journal of Medicine show that 75% of toddlers that suffered from childhood obesity at age 2 will continue to be obese at the age of 35 years. Around 55% of obese children will still be obese during adolescence and around 80% of obese adolescents will still be obese in childhood. So most children will not 
grow out of childhood obesity, but efforts of counseling the parents or caregiver and educating the family about the risks involved with childhood obesity are more important than ever before, as more and more children are affected by childhood obesity. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much.